Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about tearing down the Honda 125 motor and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. My goal for this video was just to pull the motor apart, see what bits we need to order, see what condition it was in, and I ended up doing it over many days because, you know, there were just a few issues. One of them actually was a technical issue with the camera, so there's a section of this video I end up having to narrate because the mic went all haywire and it didn't come out right. So apologies for that, but let's get started. All right, let's get into it. The first thing I do is get in and start trying to get the head bolts undone. I've been spraying these head bolts a couple of times during the week. Now luck seems to be continuing. All four are turning pretty well, so I'll just get them out with the gun now. A bit of carbon here, not sure what type of head gasket this was, but I'm sure we can find another one. Looks pretty simple if we need to get one made. Domed piston top on it. Bit of carbon, but we'll clean that up too. All right, now we've got a couple of bolts here. These nuts here are tricky to get to with this little plate in place. So I'm gonna see if I can get this plate off first. These bolts that hold this flange on hold the crankcase together, but then the bore seems to span both halves as well, so we won't get it apart until we get this off. Looks like we have to lift this plate up, but at least it's given me access to these bolts now. So the bore doesn't look too bad. I actually don't have a tool for measuring it, so I might buy one of those just to see what it is and finally have one anyway. Old gasket here, between the bore and the crankcase. All right, what I'm gonna do now then is there's a nut here under the pull start pulley. I'm gonna put the drive shaft back in, put the drive shaft in the vise, see if we get this top nut undone and attack it from that side. Looks like it's a double threaded collar here and this thread in here. So washer on top, small washer on top, big washer on the bottom. May as well get that sandblasted too. So I'm going to spray in here and then see if we can find some kind of puller to get this cover off and see what we got in the way of an ignition system. I couldn't get a flywheel style puller into these threaded holes, so I'm using this hook style. I'm gonna to have to put them right on the edge here so that they don't catch the base plate and they just pull the cover up. Once it starts moving, we should be fine. So I'll move that one out a bit so it's not touching and then we should be good to go. We'll get this back to the bench and we'll get this apart. You can see here the plate that mounts the ignition system is slotted so that the plate can be rotated to advance or retard the ignition. So the flywheel turns clockwise and this is turned clockwise fully so it looks like it's in the fully retarded position at the moment. Then you've got a little adjustment here for your points for setting your points gap and a little condenser. All right, let's get this off. A couple of days later now, I actually had a chat on Facebook with Daniel, who a viewer who works on these Victor motors, and he's given me a few tips about getting the end from the crankshaft off. 
Daniel's essentially saying, have a look in, it's probably threaded on. So the Victors were threaded. So I'll show you inside it. It's actually a little bit tricky even with a torch to see up in here much, but if we have a look in, you can see there on the Bolesco, hopefully, you'll see those threads on the outside. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is try and lock it off and try and wind it off. So conveniently, this shaft is a 3 8 diameter, so we can just use a ratchet in here. There we go. So, adapter to go from the Victor threaded crankshaft to the 3 8 drive shaft from the Waterboy upward. The next section of this video is where I had the microphone trouble I was talking about, and this whole section is just about using the puller and the press and the bearing separator to start getting all the bearings and things off this crankshaft. So directly below the drive shaft adapter was a collar that was pressed on. So I put the bearing separator onto the drive shaft and then pressed the drive shaft down out through that collar. It was on pretty tight, so I don't think I would have got it off without the press. It's also quite fiddly with this stack of blocks and you know, just because of the shape of the whole crankshaft there. But once that was off, it meant that I could pull the half of the crankcase off. Then I start moving on. Oh, sorry, inside here, yes, is the oil seal that goes around the crankshaft. So there's a lower seal and an upper seal. And on the crankshaft were a couple of bearings. These are the two bottom ones. So I then go and put the whole assembly back in the press and start getting those two bearings off. Once again, just using the bearing separator, I've got a punch there, that yellow piece is just a metal punch that goes into an indentation on the top of the crankshaft. That way the crankshaft threads don't get damaged or anything like that, just keeps it all nice and safe. Then once we have these two bearings off, I then have to try and get the whole crankshaft out of the other side of the uh, crankcase. I actually spoke to Ron briefly and he said the best thing is just to do this, just push the crankshaft straight down through the case, which is what I did. Ron's actually my neighbor at the workshop and the person who gave this motor to me. Okay, so the motor's pretty much apart now. I'll show you the bits. There were a few other bearings that I had to pull off the crankshaft, I think, at this point, but, you know, the process is identical, so I didn't see the point in filming all of it. What I will do, though, is show you what we're left with now. I've got parts in Ziploc bags, sort of everywhere. And here are our main sections. Two halves of our crankcase, the base plate with the uh, ignition timing gear, our flywheel, the bore, and the head. Looks like this flywheel was drilled out here to balance it. And it's got a little cover on here I haven't tried to take off, which I presume is for accessing the points to uh, do any adjustments you need to do without taking the flywheel off. So here are all the bearings that came out. There's two large bearings, one small, and the two oil seals. So we've got top and bottom oil seals and three bearings I'm gonna replace now they're off. As I was saying earlier, the ball looks pretty good, but I may as well put some new rings on this piston. It actually seems a bit jammed. I'll clean the grooves up, but I don't see any need to replace it. I'll just put new rings in it. Next step with this motor is to pull this little carburetor apart. I don't think it's going to be hugely complicated, but I'll save that for a separate video. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you all had a good Christmas. I'm going to be busy over the next couple of days, still just moving stuff back into this workshop and getting set up for the boat build. I'll show you that while we're here, why not? I moved a couple of the outboards from the workshop that I'll be using for future videos as well. I've got the plywood up, some of the stuff I'd already cut. This is the space I'm going to put the strong back. The fiberglass I'll hang again. Got the cabasil, Q cells, all the epoxy here finally, so we're pretty much ready to go again. All right, well, I'll catch you soon. I'll have the boat build up and running pretty much today, I think, by the end of the day, hopefully. So there'll be a video on that very soon, and we'll definitely be pushing on putting this motor back together once I can get some parts. All right, we'll take care, and I'll catch you next year. Yeah.